Hey guys, this is Rick coming from the Singapore airport. Unfortunately this week I did not have a chance to get any new content out, but I want to share with you a video that is exclusive to the Tasty Guitar member website. There are actually hundreds of videos on my website uh, that are available for just members only. Members at Tasty Guitar get the video sync tab and also the backing track to play along with on the website. So make sure you come check it out. Enjoy the lesson. Now continuing on in some of the guitar players of Memphis, Teeny Hodges might not be as well known as Steve Cropper, but he still has some stellar credits to his name being the house guitar player of High Records. He was probably best known for writing and recording on many of Al Green's hits, as well as playing with other High Records luminaries such as O.V. Wright and Ann Peebles. In this lesson, I'm gonna break down some of the beautiful guitar work he did in an Ann Peebles song, Trouble, Heartaches, and Sadness. Just some great stuff filling around a vocal line. So tune up and let's get started. All right, so I'm gonna be playing over the verse section of the song. I'll go ahead and play over it, and then I'll come back and break it down. All right, let's go ahead and break this down. Now we're starting on a D minor chord. Now this is right out of a D minor bar chord shape here at the fifth fret, uh, but I'm getting rid of the root and I'm gonna pull it off to a barred first finger there. So this is like this. Now, if you can do this in one pick stroke and continue to do a hammer on pull off, that would be even better because that's what it sounds like he's kind of doing on the record, but that's pretty tough to do be more like that. Either way, you can just pull it off and continue to pick that. That's the first measure. So it's a pull off from a D minor to a barred first finger uh, at the fifth fret. All right, in the second measure, you're gonna go down to F. You're gonna hit that right on beat one, let it ring until the end of beat two, and then you're gonna hit the F root right at the eighth fret there on the A string. But that is gonna be very short, almost like a ghost note, very cut off, so it's like this. One, two, and. Very common kind of old school R&B to kind of hit these ghost notes, really light and staccato. On beat three, you are going to hammer on from the G to the A note while holding a barred first finger at the fifth fret. So basically what you're doing is you're getting the major third and the fifth of that F chord. So this is. You do that three times. It's a very quick hammer on. That's how you get the feel here. On the and of beat four, you're just gonna go right back to this G note. So this measure all together is this. One, two. In measure three, we're going back to that D minor chord that we did that little pull off move in measure one. And like I said, you can do a strummed version like that or you can try to do it in all one motion. In measure four, we're gonna go back to that F chord shape there. One, two. On the end of beat two, gonna go down to the F note at the third fret on the D string. Again, play this note staccato as well. Cut it off very quickly. So, one, two. We're then gonna go to this shape of an F chord right on beat three, but you're gonna bar your first finger here. Hammer on to the seventh fret, the D note. Come back to the chord. So, so far we have this, one, two, one, two. Also, you're gonna cut off that chord on the and of beat three there. One, two, and three, and. Cut that one off. You're then gonna go down to this inversion of an F chord, hammer on from the G to the A note at the seventh fret, then go back to this, 
which is the G note there. So all together, this measure is the following. In the next measure, we're going to a B flat major, but we're just going to take a few notes out of the larger bar chord shape. And let me kind of explain why I think he chose to use this voicing. If you take a look at what was happening in that kind of fill in the previous measure on F chord, you would have had this line in the bottom of the chord voicings. Now, if we continue that kind of melody, we're going to end up on this F note right here. And that's the chord, the bottom of the chord voicing, which he is using for the B flat. So it leads you really nicely to that voicing. You ended up having that melody. That is a very nice melodic way to make a guitar fill. Right after you hit that B flat chord on beat one, you're gonna play kind of a ghost note of that F note at the eighth fret on the end of beat one. So this is like one, real quiet. On beat two, you're gonna play the top four strings of that B flat major bar chord. So this shape right here, but you are gonna hammer on to the G note at the eighth fret with your pinky, which would make this a B flat six chord. Right there, two and. Let that ring. So two and three and. On the and of beat three, you're gonna slide up to this shape right here, which is the interval of a sixth. And those notes are both right out of the B flat chord as well. So the full measure is the following. where they're gonna go back to D minor in the following measure, but starting by hammering on from kind of its D minor seven shape from the uh, fifth to the seventh fret, first finger to your pinky. Right there, right on beat one. One, stay there for beat two, two, and. The and of beat two, going back to that D minor seven. One, two, and three. On the end of beat three, you're gonna go back to D minor. One, two, and three, and. And then hit that again on beat four and let it ring. One, two, and three, and four. Again. On the next two measures, you're on a C chord and you're just gonna bar a first finger right down at that chord fragment. One. And then repeat it in the following measure. Next, the chord progression kind of starts over. We're back at that D minor chord like what we did on the top. To an F chord, one, two. On beat three of this measure, just a very simple little melody. So this measure all together is one, two. In the next two measures, we're gonna go back to that D minor and that really nice fill that we did on F. to the B flat. And then in this measure, on that B flat, on the end of beat two, you're gonna slide up to that interval of a sixth. So one, two, and. And that interval of a sixth is right out of that B flat uh, shape right there. So this is one, two, and three. On the end of beat three, you're just gonna hit the bottom note of that sixth, that uh, tenth fret on the uh, G string. So this is one, two, and three, and. and let that ring again. In the next measure, we're going to go back to that kind of thing we did moving from a D minor seven to a D minor. We did this earlier. And then in the final two measures, we're back on a C major chord there at the fifth fret, and you're just kind of doing this arpeggiated form right here. And that is it. So I really recommend that you break this down bar by bar if necessary, practice it slowly with the metronome, and then put it back together and play it with the backing track.